for today's special lecture, organized by our Shri Prasanna Viranjana Yoga Kendra, Mahalashmi Today's topic for the lecture is individual and nat national character. Individual and national character very relevant to present context. I request everybody to please mute yourself, mute your mic, please. Plain living and high thinking, religion were the outstanding attributes and hallmark of our national character in the ancient times. Religion was part and parcel of every day's life. Was ever undertaken without offering our prayers and invoking blessings of gods. Looking thousand years back, with this profound national character, India was the world's most economically developed country before it was subject to brutal assault and last a handful of, and loot by handful of foreigners. Today, Western materialism has invaded our lives. We forgot what true happiness is all about and went on, and we went out to search for the mirage. What is essential today for us is the character and integrity of the country's citizens. To dwell upon such an important and pertinent issue as of today, we are indeed very fortunate to have with us today a distinguished man of letters, Professor Dr. Kambampati Subramanyam, Pro Chancellor of S. Vyasa University, Bengaluru. With my pranams, humble pranams to him, on behalf of our Sri Prasanna Viranjali Yoga Kendra, and on behalf of all of you present here, I heartily extend Dr. Subramaniam, the distinguished scholar and a great crusader of ethics, culture, and yoga, a hearty welcome to you, sir. Pranam to you, sir. To draw great amount of inspiration amongst all of us yoga practitioners, I deem it an honor to present to you glimpses of the illustrious background of the scholar Dr. Subramaniam, sir. Dr. Subramaniam is holder of two, is holds two master degree. One is English and another one is philosophy. Being a linguist, Dr. Subramaniam authored in English, in Tamil, Telugu, and German languages more than 30 books on different uh, variety of topics such as education, culture, philosophy, and religion. He has spent more than 200 articles in renowned journals Known for his excellent oratory skills, the, the linguist Pandit Dr. Subramaniam has won many awards and has held high positions both in private sector, public sector organizations as well as other institutions. Dr. Subramaniam is an ardent follower of Swami Vivekananda, so much so that he published a thesis on Swami Vivekananda's English, which won him a doctorate degree. We would not have asked for a better personality to talk on the topic today than Dr. Subramaniam. With these words of brief introduction, I request scholarly Dr. Subramaniam to deliver his lecture on the topic individual and national character. 
before I request him to start, I request all my participants, all our participants to kindly mute yourself, your mic, and there will be definitely question and answers. You can, at that point in time, you can unmute and ask for the questions. And you can also put your questions in the chat box. Thank you very much. Sir, the floor is yours. Kindly start your lecture, sir. Thank you. Okay. Om Vande Sambhum Maapatim Suragurum Vande Jagat Karanam Vande Pandaga Bhushanam Sishidharam Vande Pasunam Patim Vande Surya Shishanka Vande Nayanam Vande Mukunda Priyam Vande Bhakta Jama Asraya Chavaradam Vande Bhakta Jama Asraya Chavaradam Vande Sivam Shankaram Esteemed friends, Namaste to all. We are all individuals. Each individual is unique. Each individual is a personality. Each personality has a character. Each character has many dimensions, many expressions, many aspects. The first and foremost expression of a personality the most conspicuous expression of a character is physical, the body. And that is to be healthy, to be dynamic, to be brisk, to be attractive, to be handsome or beautiful. If you find Ramayana, Sri Ramachandra Prabhu along with Vishwamitra and Lakshmana went to Mithila. When Sri Ramachandra Prabhu was walking in the streets of Mithila, there was nobody inside the house. Everybody came to the street to see him. He was so handsome, so attractive, so magnetic. So majestic, so enticing, so alluring, right from the small children to the elderly people. Everybody came out of the house. They never knew who Ram was. They never knew the qualities of Ram. They looked at the physical personality, the physical character of Sri Ramachandra Prabhu and they were fascinated. They were enamored of him. Sri Raghavam, Dasaradhatmajam, Aprameyam, Sitapatim, Raghukulan, Vayaratra Deepam, Ajanubahum, Aravindadalayataksham Ramam, Nishachara Vinashakaram. Without knowing anything about him, they were astounded by looking at his personality. In Dwapar Yuga, when Sri Krishna Paramatma as a boy of about 16 years along with Balabhadra came to Mathura to attend the Thanuryaga of Kamsa, he was walking in the streets. Akrura went to the village, brought Sri Krishna and his brother Balabhadra. And when Sri Krishna was walking in the streets of Mathura, people did not know who he was, his character, his qualities. Just by looking at his physical personality, people were enamored, they came. Look at him without closing their eyes. Such was the attractive personality of Sri Krishna. And these two are stories in Dwapara Yuga and Treta Yuga. Most recent times, Swami Vivekananda was in Chicago. He 
left India on the 31st of May 1893, reached Vancouver in the month of July, 31st July 1893. From there he went to Chicago, reached Chicago in the first week of August. He took a room. He made inquiries about the Parliament of Religions. They told that it would be in the month of September on the 11th. Somebody advised me, Sir, you cannot continue to stay here in Chicago with your meager amount. Nearby is Boston. It's about six or seven hours of journey from here if you take a train. Please proceed to Boston. And there you will find accommodation and food at a low cost. You will be happy there. Come back on the 9th or 10th of September, 11th, we are opening the Parliament of Religions. Try your luck. Swami Vivekananda went to his room, vacated the room, packed his luggage. From the room to the railway station, he was walking with his turban in his saffron robes, with uh, his majestic gait, magnificent personality. People were thronging to the streets. When Rama was in Mithila, there were people to look at him. When Krishna was in Mathura, there were people to see him. And when Swami Vivekananda, a powerful personality, was walking in the street of Chicago, right from his room to the railway station, there were people to look at him. Nobody knew who Ram was. Nobody knew who Krishna was. Nobody knew who Vivekananda was. But the physical personality was so wonderful that people were enamored of him. That is physical character. Physical personality. How do we get it? Yoga. When you practice yoga, the physical dimension, when you perform your asanas, when your diet is properly regulated, when your exercises are properly performed, every person is bound to get that physical personality. Now, all over the world in the cine field, you find actors, actresses observing the diet. They do practice yoga asanas to be trim, to be slim, to be smart, to be beautiful, to be handsome, to be attractive. This is the physical attraction character. But that's not enough. Once I was addressing the students of Indian Institute of Science on personality and character. I was describing the physical features and I was describing the actors and the actresses. I asked the boys and the girls a question. My boys, do you like any particular cinema actress and do you love any particular actress because of the physical charm? Boys raised their hands. Same question was asked to the girls. They raised their hands. And next I asked them, my dear boys and girls, you like somebody, you love somebody because of the physical features, because of the physical personality, because of the physical character. Suppose I arrange a marriage of yours with that girl or with that boy. Will you marry him? Will you marry her? The boys said, no, 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 who will marry that woman, sir? Physical charm is not sufficient to make a man a good bridegroom. Physical beauty is not sufficient to make a girl a good bride. What else is needed? Konam. Character. And that is the inner dimension. 
Now, from the physical to the spiritual, there are many characters. There are many aspects. There are many personalities. And one is physical. Next is moral. Next is ethical. Next is national. Next is spiritual. Very rarely a person goes beyond the physical character. Physical character, a person can develop, a physical personality can be developed by anybody. Swami Vivekananda was very handsome, very attractive. So was Rama, so was Krishna. And we find many actors and actresses very, very handsome. If we take the example of Swami Vivekananda, he came to the railway station, booked the ticket, boarded the train. In that compartment, there were eight people. By his side, there were two. Opposite to him, there was a lady, Miss Sanborn. By her side, another two American gentlemen. The other side, two people. It's a coach containing eight people seated. And people were fond of Vivekananda's physical personality. They were going up and down on the platform to look at the physical stature of Swami Vivekananda, physical personality of Swami Vivekananda. Some of the people entered the compartment, glance of Swami Vivekananda, and they returned to the platform. When Swami Vivekananda was drawing the crowds, the American gentleman got surprised. The train took off. It whistled out. It steamed out. And one of the American gentlemen broke the silence and raised the question. Mr. I have been observing you for the past 15-20 minutes. Many people were drawn to you. Some of them entered the coach to look at you. You are not a man of this place. Your skin is brown. We are whiter than you. We are brighter than you. We are taller than you. We are richer than you. Our shoes cost more than $500. Our watches cost more than $1,000. Our hat, our suit, our entire dress, everything is very, very costly. Your clothes may not cost even $5 or $10. You are an ordinary person. What is it that is able to draw the crowds? When we are unable to attract anybody, is it because you are a sannyasi? No. There are many sannyasis in this uh, country. Many both the shoes are present. It's not because of your saffron robes. Something is there beyond that. We are all like gentlemen. All our appearance was unable to draw the crowds. How is it you are able to draw the crowds and mesmerize them with your personality, with your character? And Swami Vivekananda listened to them, looked at them, came down to them. Friends, to make you look like a gentleman, you require a washerman to wash your clothes and press them. You require a barber to give you a crop, crop and a clean shave. You require a cobbler to make your shoes and polish them. And you require a tailor to stitch the suit for you. When everything is ready, you cannot wear your own coat. Some assistant has to come and help you. At least half a dozen people are required to make you look like a gentleman. But in India, it is not the dress that makes a person. 
character makes a gentleman in India. Appearance may look like a gentleman in the West. First time it was a revelation. Many people are handsome to look at. They may have good weight, good height, broad shoulders, large eyes, etc. Actresses, actors have. But how about the character? Moral character. And the moral character has three dimensions. One is honesty. Honesty is a negative virtue. Out of fear that you may lose the name. Out of fear that you may lose the reputation. Out of fear that you may be misunderstood by somebody. A person is honest. For example, if I find a 500 rupee note on the way, I don't take it because there is somebody looking at me. If nobody is present nearby, I do pick it up, put it in my pocket and walk home. In the eyes of the public, I am honest, not because of conviction. Even if then there is nobody to look at me, if I am not to pick up that 500 rupee note, even if I take it, if I deposit it in the treasury or if I take it and drop it in a hundial of a temple or give it to a poor boy, then I am a man of integrity. Harish Chandra is a man of probity, good, better, best, beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful, like that. In moral character, there are people who are honest, they are people who are of integrity. There are people who are of probity established for their goodness, kindness, honesty, integrity, etc. It is this character, moral character, that it draws. A man of word, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa is not a man of physical personality. Mahatma Gandhi is not a man of a physical personality. He is a puny person. When he was arrested because of certain movements in Satyagraha, in the independence struggle, he was jailed for some time. He was brought to the court to be tried. There were about 10,000 people. Absolute silence. Without the upper garment, with the lion cloth, with the bespectacled face, with a walking stick hitting the surface, when he was entering the court hall, the man to stand and respect Mahatma Gandhi was the western judge. Was it his physical personality that drew the attention of the judge? No. It was his moral character. So physical character is number one, physical personality is number one, for which you may require a good dieting exercise, etc. And the next is truthfulness. Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Yama Niyama. Satya, Himsa, Parigraha, Sthaya. Who is observing them? Do's and don'ts. The very foundation of yoga practice is truth. Ahimsa, Aparigraha, Asteya, Brahmacharya, they all constitute one's character. They are all to contribute to one's character. From the physical, you go to the moral character, wherein you get the purity. When you follow all the physical exercises, it is virtuous. In Sanskrit, there are three beautiful words. Virtuous is physical charm, physical attraction. When you are clean, when you are trim, when you observe the bodily practices, when you diet, you look fine. You look very decent. You look very attractive. That is virtuous. 
virtues ojas and tejas are ordinarily seen as synonyms no there is a lot of difference between one word and the other virtues is no doubt uh, the attraction attraction that a person gets because of the physical smartness slimness briskness dynamism physical health but ojas he is out of one's brahmacharya purity of character chastity and that is very very important sri ramachandra prabhu has that purity of character ravana was scared of ramachandra prabhu then anjaneya swami went to lanka everybody was afraid of him because of his brahmacharya not only the physical strength purity everywhere the second dimension of character the second dimension of personality is purity of character and that purity of character is ojas next we go to the third dimension and that is ethical character humanism swami vivekananda on the 11th of september became the global personality the previous day he was an unknown monk a person of obscurity on the 11th because of his wonderful lecture at the parliament of religions sisters and brothers of america he became a great personality he was given partial lodgings distinguished men and women of the city came to pay homage they brought gifts they brought delicious food items all the great people by the time they returned it was about 11 o'clock in the night and he was hungry he was tired he was sleepless any person in the place of swami vivekananda would have rushed to the table would have eaten the food items would have gone to the bed to take rest swami ji did not it was about 11 o'clock in the night he rolled on the floor and wept profusely composed two sentences when thousands and thousands of my fellow human beings in india do not have a food to eat what right do i have to eat this luxurious food there it takes is humanism when so many food items were there in front of him he thought of indians poor indians starving indians and then he did not sleep when my fellow human beings in india do not have a shelter what right do i have to enjoy the pleasures of bed here he kept quiet he composed the wonderful sentences him may call a mahatma whose heart bleeds for the poor and him may call a duratma traitor drohi scoundrel who having to be educated at the cost of millions and millions of poor people does not think of them does not live for them does not love them does not have concern for them who is a mahatma a man who has fellow feeling concern for the fellow human beings and that is ethical character sri ram could not relish sri krishna lived for the poor people swami vivekananda you will find everywhere humanism 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 first is physical character to draw everybody's attention physically next is a moral character when you are honest and are a man of a integrity without corruption then you are a man of ethics you are a man of humanism ethical character and this ethical character is tejas first is virtuous second purity of your character ojas third 
you have your stages that's not sufficient not only should you feel for them you have to work for them not only should you have concern for them what is your contribution to uphold the society lift up the society give them a chance there are people philanthropists who have given money who have given their all sacrifice when you have the humanism when you love the people you serve the people when you serve the people you sacrifice your everything tyage naike amrutatva manaso the three wonderful words in sanskrit varchas ojas and tejas varchas is physical smartness ojas is purity of character selam chastity honesty and ojas tejas is love for them concern for them and vishwamitra maharshi mitra he has become he is the friend of the universe because he has given the great gayatri mantra for the welfare of everybody what is it he has got in the entire ramayana everybody has some benefit what profit does anjaneya have he has served everybody he has a love for everybody he has saved sita from committing suicide he has saved bharata from jumping into the fire he saved rama and lakshmana when they were lying unconscious on the battle field all the characters have been loved and served by anjaneya and that is tejas that is a national character very few people live for others vivekananda says they alone live who live for the welfare of others the others are more dead than alive we have three things at our disposal we have our time out of 24 hours how much time do you give for yourself how much time do you give for society do we help the neighbors do we help the country number one is a time out of 24 hours how much time are we giving to others all the 24 hours we give the time to ourselves to our eating to our sleeping to our enjoying the pleasures next we have energy all the energy to accumulate wealth or fame how much of our energy is being used for the uplift of the society national character and then money what is the percentage that we give to the society all the 100 rupees for myself cent percent for myself we have time at our disposal we have energy at our disposal we have money at our disposal and personal character physical character ordinary people use all the three for themselves as you raise in moral character as you raise in ethical character as you raise in national character the percentage of energy time and money will be less for the person more for the others there are people who take very little once a person came to my house i liked him i fed him before he left i gave him a dhoti and a shawl he said no i don't take it why i have only three one i wear one i wash one is spare do we require more than three pairs there are people with 400 500 chappals clothes is it not mismanagement of the production when we are really philanthropic when we do you have the when we do have the national character minimize 
the money time and energy spent on myself maximize the time money and energy for others and that is a national character that is vishwa tejas all our rishis they had a humble life modest life minimum for themselves maximum for others if you take the number of sarees in this country there are women who have more than 200 300 sarees in the godrej bureau whereas there are people who do not have two do we require it's a small arrangement wrong management the national character is based on the ethical excellence beyond that he is our brahma tejas spiritual character from the physical character or personality to moral character from moral character to ethical character from ethical character to national character from national character we raise further to spiritual character all these things you can see in swami vivekananda physically he was very attractive morally he was perfect ethically he was excellent and he is a militant monk he has inspired the national leaders suhas chandra bose was inspired by swami vivekananda had he been alive i would have been at the feet of swami vivekananda said suhas chandra bose arvind ghosh was so fond of swami vivekananda that he submitted himself to his way of thinking silently swami vivekananda was a national character morally upright ethically excellent nationally patriotic the patriotic monk of this country when you raise to the higher levels the physical attention will be less you take less food you spend less time for your house we i make a survey i find many people thinking of various ways to increase the income what for to buy another fridge to buy another bungalow to buy another car each person has two cars three cars or four cars when there are people who are walking on the street unable to have even the shoes chappals is this the national character if everybody is to develop that national character which is based on humanism india will be most prosperous in india today what is needed is selflessness we practice yoga now what for do we practice yoga to build the body to be healthy to be free from sickness that is not the dimension it is the service aspect yoga is to be peacefully useful yoga is to be usefully peaceful and that is national character during the independence struggle freedom movement how many people came out of the streets are we able to see such people inspired people in the schools colleges and the other places when it is a question of spending your time energy and money for the welfare of others we shrink back national character is the need of the hour and the second dimension of national character's meaning is ours is a land of dharma ours is a land of satya it is a sanatana dharma humility modesty humbleness where have they all gone west we are imitating the west when macaulay was sent by the british parliament to study the country he wrote india is a nation of 
excellent national character. We have to ruin it. They should not be patriotic. Bharatiyata is to be removed. They must be the both. People of a brown body with a British mind. They should yape the West. They should imitate the West. And then we will be successful. The educational system introduced by Mekale was to kill Indianism. Was to smother the national character. We have forgotten our ancient literature. We have forgotten our heritage. We have forgotten our culture. Is this the education that we are expected to learn? One by one, we have to give up that selfishness. Expansion. Expansion of character. And finally, we have to go to that spiritual dimension. That is the speciality of this country. Earlier, you may have to Practice them and you demand respect. A spiritual gentleman does not demand respect. He will only command respect. I give an incident. Sri Krishna Paramatma was sent by Pandavas as their messenger to Duryodhana. Krishna sent his time of arrival my dear Duryodhan, Monday morning, 10 o'clock, I will be there with you to deliver the message of Dharmaraj. Immediately Duryodhana convened a special meeting of all his subjects, ministers and senior citizens. My dear friends, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, that Krishna is coming to deliver the message. When he comes to Hastinapur, when he comes to our Darbar Hall, we should not show any respect to him. Nobody should stand to respect that Krishna. If anybody disobeys me, the death sentence will be imposed. All the 10,000 people nodded their head. Next day, morning, Monday, Krishna Krishna arrived at the entrance. There were two sentinels, watchmen. They dropped their weapons, fell at the feet of Sri Krishna, worshipped him. Next, when he was walking into the Darbar Hall, people respected him with folded hands. Some of them touched his feet. When 9,999 people were showing respect to Krishna, they were honoring him. The only man sitting in the chair was Duryodhan. Look at everybody. He too stood up. He too offered his pranams. That is spirituality. When our people, our Prime Minister Modi ji goes to the International gathering commands respect because he is coming from Yoga Bhumi, a land of Sanatana Dharma, Dharma Bhumi, Karma Bhumi, Jnana Bhumi, Tapo Bhumi, Yoga Bhumi. How many of us are able to understand the spirit of this country? Selflessness is the spirit of this country. Probity is the spirit of this country. Ahimsa is the spirit of this country. Satya is the spirit of this country. If Sri Krishna has performed that himsa, it is a surgery performed by the doctor. There is a, no other way. The disease is acute. Unless the surgery is performed, there cannot be any improvement. It is born of ahimsa. A doctor's knife is not harmful, it is helpful. Ours is a wonderful land. So, what I am trying to drive home here is each person has a character. And that character is normally physical, selfish, self-centered. From that cocoon-like life, we have to come out. 
we have to break the barriers of selfishness and egoism that is what is taught by yoga that is what is taught by anjaneya swami did he ever do anything for his benefit never what benefit does anjaneya get if he serves sri ramachandra prabhu he is a stranger everybody got a gift not anjaneya he continued to be seated near the feet of sri ramachandra prabhu tyagaraj praises anjaneya swami like him give me the position of a bantu sevaka servant to be at your feet at the feet of mother bharat you are to be like hanuman india will become very prosperous in no time the need of the hour is national character in tune with the spirit of this country we are practicing yoga forgetting satya himsa parigraha aste etc yama and niyam are totally buried fathoms deep we are only practicing asanas so that we can have good health what for is health to enjoy the pleasures of the body and to live long health is to be acquired not for the benefit of myself the body is kept clean if the body is kept strong if the body is kept healthy it will be useful for the service of the society and that is our national character have we ever remembered sibi chakravarti he has given his entire body to save a dove what a great country is this moral excellence moral uprightness harish chandra maharaj could have said no there is no document there is no signature there is no body as a witness he could have said no maharshi i want to give you morality now i am very very happy the international day of yoga is being celebrated the spirit of the celebration is to be understood it is not popularizing the physical exercises it's not for popularizing the physical health alone if i am rich it will be beneficial to the others if i am healthy it will be beneficial to the others and therefore in the footprints of swami vivekananda in the footprints of anjaneya swami let us try to understand the spirit of yoga and let us understand the spirit of character personality physical character is the smallest moral character is better stronger higher taller richer then we have the third dimension that is ethical excellence serve the others and finally we become stalwarts of spirituality like vishwamitra and others they sit and meditate for the welfare of society for the well being of everybody that is the highest from the physical to the spiritual through the national character let us evolve i am very very glad i am given an opportunity to address uh, this is gathering of prasanna anjaneya yoga society thank you very much i am really grateful to every one of you for listening to me with all patience it is 7:25 on my watch nearly one hour i have spoken god bless you may you all be peaceful so that we are useful to others it is not for any selfish purpose that we should do anything a percentage of it must be for the welfare if i give 10 rupees today tomorrow let me give 50 rupees if i give one hour today tomorrow let me give two hours if i give 10 percent of 10 percent of my energy for the welfare of society let it be increasing increasing love expands service increases 
yoga unfolds from the physical character to the spiritual character let us evolve sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadraani pasyantu ma kaschit dukha bhavet ayom tatsat thank you very much god bless us all wonderful talk eh? evaporating it was very very inspiring thank you very much now i will request our audience to unmute and ask for their any doubts or any clarification any point of view they would like to put welcome now I think it is all silent. I don't think I have given any scope for any doubt or question to be raised. It is a self-explanatory. One. The one. Mm. In one way, what you telling is right, sir. Definitely, you have covered so many aspects of an individual. Good. I am unable to hear. That's all. I take little time to ask. When you were speaking about Lord Macaulay, I was just wondering. So easily, we were able to be overtaken by the English system. The thousands of years of the history of our yoga bhumi, karma bhumi, dharma bhumi, everything. uh somehow they were so strong enough to mesmerize anyone or forcibly take over the system to build a mansion it uh, takes plenty of money effort and uh, to destroy it collapse it man has a weak flesh temptations are many from the west a big ship came full of cigarette packets and they were distributed free you can imagine how many cigarette packets might have come in a single ship some lakhs crores and everybody was given free later on they were sold temptation there is that uh, mephistopheles or satan true for several centuries we built our national character one fellow came slowly to spread to everybody and to rebuild vivekananda came still we are building the society is rebuilding the lost glory your question is very good macaulay came very easily he was able to destroy the heap the great building was brought it was made to fall in no time poor people got tempted today even the brightest people are tempted by money it requires therefore even anjaneya was tempted your prasanna anjaneya mainakam came surasa came simhika came he was found how many of us can raise to the stature of anjaneya temptations it is psychic weakness chutram hrudaya durbalyam tyakto utishta parantapa a man of arjuna's stature became weak that's the reason why traditions are to be kept up that is the reason how discipline is to be maintained we are weak everybody is weak to that matter the society has to maintain the high standards of discipline 
Unfortunately, we are lost, we are tempted, and we have fallen. We are rebuilding, no question of regret. There are many organizations, for example, your own organization. We are rebuilding, we are hopeful, we are confident that we can bring the Sanatana Dharma once again live. Definitely, sir, that should happen. I, I appreciate your positivity, sir. That is not what everybody would like to have because we have so much of negativity. Whether we will be able to do so involved in us negativity, are we able to take out? That is the question everybody has. I think we should proceed with positivity and we should believe in our strength, sir. Thank you. Namaste. Uh, anybody else? Or else we would like to end this program with a vote of thanks. Let's see if anyone has. Please wind up with a vote of thanks. It's nearing eight. Uh, Mr. Shant Kumar? Yes, sir. Uh, kindly report vote of thanks on behalf of Prasanna Virajana Yoga Kendra, please. A thousand pranams to our Yoga Vidwan and an authority on the life and philosophy of Sri Swami Vivekananda. Dr. K. Subramanyam, sir, you have delivered one of the most impressive, thought provoking, inspiring, and enlightening talk on the individual and the na nation and individual and nationality character by taking examples from our ancient epics rama shri ramayana mahabharata bhagavad gita and swami vivekananda's life and philosophy we, on behalf of shri prasanna veeranjaniya yoga kendra i immensely thank you for sparing your time and making your our life a blessed one on this evening. Simultaneously, I will thank all the participants. A special mention has to be made about the beautiful question of Suma Madam made and a wonderful answer our Subramaniam sir gave. Once again, I thank you all. But last but not the least, I have to thank and remember our yoga guru, Sri Nagesh sir, for organizing this beautiful program on this evening. Thank you all. Good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir, again. We are indebted to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am withdrawing. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Nagesh sir.